What's going on, my friends? Happy Thursday to you. Let's have some fun today. I really got some stuff to show you today. I want to be very, very clear about my intention today to not only just show you how to hawk the market using redfin.com, but also to specifically right now for the timely aspects of this here on uh, July 21st, 2022, is right now this market in San Diego, really Southern California, maybe everywhere, this is the VA buyer's dream market. This is the FHA buyer's dream market. So <clears throat> that doesn't mean you need to FOMO into anything. That doesn't mean that you need to hurry up and immediately go buy something. No, but you need to take the right steps. So what are the right steps? I'm going to show you, explain what all those steps are today um, in fairly quick order and <clears throat> explain to you how to position yourself to be ready. How do you get a good look at the market? How do you understand what's happening in the market? Redfin.com is a great tool for this. The best one that exists that I know of. The best one that exists. I'll show you how to use it. It's real simple. Okay. So the first step, the first thing you want to do is always get pre-approved. I've got situations, you know, they happen, they happen this week. People get into contract and they haven't been pre-approved and then we're scrambling. And it's never a good position to be in. It's no reason to add stress to the situation. And what if you don't qualify? That happens too. That happens too. So you want to know what you qualify for. So you get pre-approved first, find out what's my budget. Okay. That's something I can actually help you with. I can help you get pre-approved. So if you haven't done that yet, do that first. Now you know what your budget is. Now you can say, all right, let's establish a search parameter based on our budget so that we can then figure out, all right, what areas should we be hawking? What research should we be doing in the first place? And so what we'll do here is I'll show you on redfin.com. You're going to want to log in. Now, what well, the good news is you don't need to create a new login. You can use Google, you can use Facebook, you can use Apple. Any of these will work. And by the way, we'll get to all the timely stuff. We'll get to the news. Jobless came, claims rose. You're seeing things like people getting laid off. Um, there were several things we're going to talk about today beyond that, but I want to get through the the evergreen elements first here. And so I'll just gonna I'm just gonna use my Google to sign in, <clears throat> to sign in here, boom. And the reason why you want to do that is because you want to be able to track information, and you want to give Redfin.com the ability to send you information, to email you information, as it becomes pertinent to the things that you are interested in. So. Um, you'll see when you open up here, and I just went and favorited one. Uh, actually, no, I think this one was one from a while back um, and uh, on the Google side of this. And so, you know, it'll tell you in your feed everything you've favorited. You can look at your favorites here. You can look at ones that had price changes, um, all those things. And by the way, now, I don't know if you guys saw this or not, but when you're searching in your search, we'll look at this. This is really, really interesting to me. You can pull up in the filters oh, what the heck so it was on the app but it's not on here it's got to be on here there's a way to pull up uh ones that have had price reductions i'll find it we'll figure it out so <clears throat> It'll, it'll they'll basically allow you to search for homes that have had price reductions, which is a really interesting way to search. Uh, okay, so we're going to look for sales. So let's say, you know, I've got 50,000 bucks. I'm a conventional buyer. I'm pre-approved for 800,000. And so now with the market being what it is, I can actually search for 800,000. We got to have three bedrooms minimum. Got to have two baths minimum. We definitely want a detached home. And so I'm going to take off. Um, active is cool. Yep. Da, 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 da. I'll leave all this stuff the same. <clears throat> Let's say we have to have two garage spots. Let's do that. Okay. So now we have a certain search criteria that we're looking at where we can review this on our own. Now you remove the outline when you go on here, unless you have a specific area, you can draw, you can say, Hey, we just want stuff in like El Cajon surrounding area. You can draw and then they'll just give you the ones that are in the area that you're looking for. And so it's very, very easy and user-friendly. Hopefully you can see this. Okay. <clears throat> I can't move myself, unfortunately, um, with StreamYard. But so you have this, this that you can search now. Okay. So I've searched. Okay. I want 
El Cajon around that area. It doesn't have to be exact, but somewhere in a short distance to that. Okay, cool. Now I can pull these up. So let's pull one up. So you go and you look at homes. So now you're pre-approved. You're looking at homes online. All you have to do, you don't need to go buy anything. You don't have to go look at anything. If you want to go look at stuff, go for it. Uh, there's nothing wrong with looking at homes. It's part of your research. Remember, when you are researching the biggest purchase you'll probably ever make, it's okay to investigate as many elements as you like. You can go look at the property. Um, you can drive by the neighborhood. You can you know, do an official showing. You can look online. You can do all kinds of things. Look at maps. Everything is fair game. It's all research. So it's okay to research as thorough as you want. Now, if you see one that you like here, let's say, okay, hey, we like this one. Then all you need to do is click favorite. Okay, now that I've added this to my favorites, everything that happens with this property is going to be emailed to me. Whether there's a price reduction, I'll get an email. Price reduced on your one of your favorites. <clears throat> um, if it goes under contract, it'll say this one's under contract. After the sale is complete, they'll, they'll email you again. Hey, it's sold for this much. So you get all of the information about the property. Why is that important? Because if you're researching this, maybe you're looking at this and you're going, a lot of buyers are thinking this right now. Well, what prices go down? You know, man, 750 seems like a lot for this house, even though it's in really nice shape, you know. Um, I think prices are gonna go down. Okay. Well, don't just don't just guess, wait and see. Keep an eye on it. Favorite the homes that you like, <clears throat> and then you go back to your feed. And your feed will show you the stuff you favorited or the things that you've looked at or the things that, uh, here you go, you click your favorites right here. Okay, here's the ones that we favorited, right? And it'll and if there's price changes, you can look at open houses, you can all this stuff in here. Did it not save my favorite, the one we just did? Come on, Redfin. Uh, let's see, maybe I can go back here. Yeah, we favorited that, right? Yeah. And you can also click this here. So uh, looking for homes like this one, you can click this button right here and they will send you homes and they'll say, hey, look for new homes like this in your inbox and it'll actually send them to you. So there's lots of different ways you can research the market and keep track of what's going on. Because if you think that 750 is too much for this, what you think does not matter. What matters is what is someone willing to pay for it? So you aren't willing to pay 750 for it, but is somebody. And you can find that out. Watch some deals close. Look, if it takes you two, three, four, five months of researching properties uh, before you really start to get into it and feel like you know the, where the market is, that's okay. That's perfectly okay. Wait until some of these close. You'll get the email. Oh, it's sold for seven sixty five, honey. Guess it was worth seven fifty. Or hey, that one sold for seven thirty. We should have made an offer. You know, you can you can get the the feel for what's going on with these different properties. And in, in my experience, this has been so, so helpful because I'll just look like, for example, sometimes you have a client and as, a, as the lender, you don't normally look for properties, but sometimes I see listings or, you know, things like that and I'll shoot them out or I'll promote them because I think they're such good deals. I saw one today. There's a three unit in Oceanside. My goodness. Do I still have that up? Oh, I don't. Um, it's a smoking deal. It's a million bucks. And uh, yeah, a legit three unit. Uh, great for military buyers, by the way. And I am a VA home loan specialist. Happy to help you figure out how to qualify for that if you're interested. But the the reality is you want to be able to get information about the properties that you're seeing, not just when you're looking at it. Because if you just look at this property and you say, okay, 750, oh, I don't think it's worth that. But then you don't ever get any information past that. You're not actually doing research. You may as well just be scrolling a social media feed. You're just taking an input but you're not verifying anything. You're not validating anything. You're not doing proper research here. You need results in order to have research. There's your one-liner for today. You need results in order to have research. Those results need to be finalities of something. In this case, the home selling. If the home ultimately sells for more or less than this, you can either validate your opinion on it or you can be corrected. Let the market correct you. L allow the market to correct you if you're wrong because you will be wrong sometimes. There's no question about it. You're going to be wrong. And when you are, you know, it's not like a game show. It's just, it is what it is. And you can learn from it. Okay. Wow. That one sold a lot more than we thought it would. Oh, hey, look, that one sold way less. We should have made an offer. Those are the two things that are probably going to happen. Or that one sold right at list. It was right on the money. 
but you start to get a feel for things, especially in your area. So when we did this search, another thing that's nice, um, how do I get back? You can also say, nope, don't like it. You can exit out right there. Why isn't it letting me go back there? Redfin.com, you picked a very strange time to be weird. I promise you this website is, is really useful. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, so you can look, zoom in more closely here. Like maybe you want something. Oh, you know what? We'd actually prefer to be more on the you know west side of this search criteria. So let's look at those ones first. And let's try to get an idea of like Lake Murray. We really want to know like what's a good deal in Lake Murray. Oh, here's a home with a pool in Lake Murray. We're under 800,000. We're definitely going to favorite that one because we would really love to have a pool. And I would love to know what a pool home would sell for. I'm going to look at this house. I'm going to look at all 37 photos and I'm going to get a feel for myself what I think it's worth. I've favorited it now. In my mind, I know I'm going to wait and see what happens. I'm going to wait and see what it closes at. And if you spend two or three months researching the market like this, as a buyer, you will know a lot about the market. You will be an actual participant in the market who knows what's going on. So you're pre-approved. You're doing your research. Guess what happens next? The best, this is the best part. The research will pay off for you when you all of a sudden open up one of these homes or you open up one of these searches and you go, whoa, look at this one. It's got this, 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 and this, and they're only asking this. You'll know it's a deal. You'll know it's a deal because you've paid attention to the market. You've seen what other homes are asking and what they have. And you can tell this one is a deal. And that is when you're going to want to do, obviously, a walk through the property, contact your agent, do all that stuff. But in the meantime, you can research what's going on. Even if you don't have an agent, you can still research what's going on and see where the market is truly. But you have to do some work on your own. If you do use an agent uh, early on in the process, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, it's, it could be a great thing. Sometimes they'll find deals for you that you wouldn't see on here. A lot of transactions take place off the MLS. So having an agent early on in the process can be very, very beneficial for you. A lot of people don't want it. They don't want the mortgage guy either. I totally get it. You just want to research properties. That's why I'm making this video. Hey, research the properties, but you should get pre-approved first. If you don't, there's a good chance you'll either add a lot of stress to yourself that's unnecessary or... You may have some serious heartbreak on your hands, especially if there's something we could have caught earlier. So I'm going to highly recommend that whatever you do when you're researching the market and you're, and you're even considering the, pro the possibility of buying a home, get pre-approved first. I can help you with that part and get you pre-approved quickly, easily. We don't charge any lender fees. There's no cost to get pre-approved. There's nothing to worry about. Having your credit pulled for a mortgage, you can have your credit pulled for a mortgage as many times as you want. doesn't do any damage. I can prove that to you if you want. Just let me know. I'll send you a link. But you can get a free quote on rate, on payment, get all that figured out ahead of time. Because what you don't want to do is say, well, I like the houses that are about 775, 8, 800, but I want a payment of three grand a month. You're just not, it's just not possible. You know, that would be like a 0% interest rate. So there's, you need to know the reality of how purchase price um, connects with monthly payment. Okay. So, well, while you're doing this, you can do this for as long as you want. You can do this for a month. You can do this for six months. The longer you do it, the more you'll have a feel for the market, the more you'll understand when a good deal presents itself, and the more you'll understand what's happening with sellers. If you're seeing a lot of price reductions, if you're seeing a lot of these deals close for less than what the list price is, you'll know that and you'll know how to approach it yourself. Then you add that, couple that with a real estate professional whose advice you should always listen to. doesn't mean you have to do it, but you should really do it most of the time and listen to them. Don't hire someone unless you're willing to listen to them. That's your criteria for hiring a real estate agent. You don't hire them unless you're willing to listen to them. You got to let them do their job. And as long as you do that, you have your own research in hand, you'll feel very confident about what you're doing and you'll be able to uh, make smart moves from there. Okay? So that is how you use Redfin to research the market and just set it on autopilot. All you could do is you could sit here and we could just go, you know what? Let's just scan through all these and each one you could do a quick heart right here. Boom. I like that one. Four beds. Cool. We like it. Boom. Here's another one, <clears throat> a little bit bigger, almost 1400 square feet. And you could heart all these ones that are in your area. 
and you're going to get automated information emailed to you about these properties every single time something happens with them. So you will know everything that's going on at every home that's in your search area almost immediately when it happens. That is such a cool tool. So it's free. I mean, you don't even have to like give me your login. You just log in. I log in through uh, Google. You can log in through Facebook. You can log in through Apple. They made it very, very easy. So you can also get much more specific in your search if you want to, pools, lot size, all kinds of things. Um, and that's what I suggest that you do. So if you really want to research your dream property, put in all your criteria, see what's out there, heart everything that makes sense, and then just let the data roll in. Just sit back and collect the data and learn the market. Okay. All right. Hope that's helpful. Let's dig into some things here. So interesting day today. Uh, we are going to talk about mortgage rates dropping. And uh, essentially, you know, 63 basis points is a huge move. Now, somebody, and I don't know if we can necessarily say or remember who, <laughs> but somebody has been telling you that mortgage rates were primed to drop. Now, Federal Reserve meets next week. And it's very likely they're going to raise rates at least 75 basis points. They may raise them a full percentage point. I don't think so. I think 75 basis points is more likely um, or the most likely. The last time they did that uh, was right here. And we, we dropped, uh, rates dropped a quarter of a percent that day. So that day we had rates go down a quarter of a percent because remember, when price goes up on this chart, this mortgage-backed securities chart, rates go down. So we want to see prices get higher for bonds, so those yields will drop. And we've seen, you know, we had a nice run here. We got about a 50% retracement here, and just tons of support came in. And we, I've been talking to you about these wicks and just how much I like this chart formation and how it seems to me that it's just poised to take off. And yesterday, I wasn't even worried. We got that red candle yesterday, and I wasn't even worried. Did you notice? Wasn't worried. Just cool as a yeah! cucumber. And you, you, it happened today. Today, we got the 60-plus basis points, a little bit of a shakeout, and then boom, right up to serious resistance. We have serious resistance here. There's no doubt about it. We've got, is that the 50-day? That's the 50-day moving average. And then we've got a Fibonacci. Um, you know, and, uh, that's a pretty big resistance level right here. So we got two things at the same point, which makes it look like it's going to be difficult for rates to drop from here. But if you can bust through this, it should be a nice run, you know, 130 or 40 basis points with really not any resistance at all. So if we can puncture that tomorrow or next week, when we get the news from the Fed, the very deflationary news from the Federal Reserve, which is exactly what we're doing, then we could see rates drop again. Today, rates dropped about an eighth of a percent, quarter of a percent in some cases, mostly an eighth of a percent and then change. Um, but we've gotten, we got a nice move here and it's what I've been expecting. And I do expect more. I do expect more. I think we will it is likely that we would re revisit. There's like a magnet on this right here. Very likely we revisit that. If we do, from where we are right now, that's a quarter to three-eighths of a percent drop. Just that move right there. And that could happen relatively quickly if we can get through this insane resistance we've got directly overhead at the moment. So let's see what happens. Also, today should be noted, the stock market went down to start the day, rallied throughout the day, okay, into positive territory. Bonds sort of did the same thing. Bonds, bond prices sort of move with the, the stock market down and then up. And they're typically uh, opposites in that regard. So if that's not bullish action for bonds, I don't know what is. But that was good. We're expecting rates to drop. We could be wrong. Remember that. You could always be wrong. The market can always go any direction. We're just trying to figure out which way it's leaning. You're going to hear a lot of people a lot of people, the, the crash talk phenomenon, I think, is something that it's truly interesting from a psychological, sociological perspective. Truly, truly interesting. And what's really interesting about it to me is so many people want to hear the negativity. I'm sitting here just trying to be objective. And it's like, 
the numbers have just been terrible for, I mean, not terrible, but um, the numbers have been really bad in comparison to other videos. <clears throat> I don't understand that at all. We should want the truth. You should be seeking the truth. Don't seek to confirm your assumptions. Seek truth. Forget your assumptions. When you're doing research, you have to forget your assumptions. You just have to look at the information. A lot of people believe that huge um, job losses are on the way. So we saw that jobless claims did rise again. And another sign the labor market is cooling. So initial claims totaled 251,000 for the week, um, which is up from the week before and above the estimate. So 11,000 people, this is for the whole country. Um, jobless claims. And then we're seeing some things where people are, there's lots of different companies that are laying people off. And if you look at cnbc.com, you'll see probably, I don't know how many articles, um, snap shares plunge, this point second quarter results, plans to slow hiring, not fire anyone, but we're going to slow hiring. Okay. You're going to see a lot of that stuff, um, throughout, you know, the business news. And we even saw 7-Eleven store chain 7-Eleven cuts 880 corporate jobs, part of restructuring. 880, well, although I pray for those people, um, losing your job sucks. I've never been fired from a job, but I have been the hatchet man many times before, and there's nothing I'd rather never do again than fire somebody. And, you know, 880 people lost their jobs, that sucks. But it's also not that many. We have to look more at these bigger numbers. You're going to see a lot of headlines like this, though. Um, where you're gonna, there's going to be sort of a negative sentiment to it. Believe it or not, the news, they really do want negative sentiment. Hated it. That's what they want. It works better for them. Fear, uncertainty, doubt, all those things help them sell. It gets clicks. So you're going to see a lot of these things. The 7-Eleven thing is really a non-story. <clears throat> it really is, but it's in the news. So why? Why, why, why? They want blood in the streets. They want carnage. It just makes them so much money when that happens. And I'm sitting here trying to be objective looking and going, well, gosh, it sure seems like we could be turning a corner here. Maybe not, but it sure does seem like we could be, especially since no one expects it. Here's an interesting one. Consumers are shelling out an average $10,000 more for used cars than if prices were normal, research shows. I can tell you that for sure. I've been checking on the price of my used Tesla for a long time. As you know, I've chronicled many times. I bought it for 38000 and it was worth 54000 <laughs> through almost three years later. That's crazy. Listen, we this is probably the best barometer that we have. This is the Big Mac of inflation for us here. If, if used cars are still selling for more than what people bought them for, uh, that's just crazy. That's crazy. But that shows you where things are at. That shows you that inflation is still there. It's still happening. Um, it also shows you that, you know, people still have money to spend. It does. Uh, because, yeah, sometimes people's cars break down and they have to get a new one. Th that happens. But that's not a market moving thing. A market moving thing is when people do stuff all at once or as, as a whole or in mass. And that is the kind of thing that we have to look out for. But I mean, just the whole idea of paying so much for these used cars is pretty wild. Um, car dealers are loving it, that's for sure. But <clears throat> people who are trying to figure out what to do with their used cars are in the same catch 22 as people have all the equity in their house. Like, well, gosh, we get rid of this, we trade this one in, we gotta pay up for that one. Um, you know, but it's it's just, it's a, it's a sign that inflation's still here and people still have money and they're still spending it. And we talked about the research yesterday Consumers are still paying their debts. We haven't seen defaults on anything. I've, I made jokes about how we haven't even seen fire sales on boats yet. You're going to see fire. You would have to see a lot of things happen here. Still a lot of boxes need to be checked before we can even start really saying like, okay, I'm really worried about things. If we get a five or 10% pullback in real estate prices, that would be totally okay. Right now, FHA and VA buyers have an opportunity to, to seize. And that's why I wanted to make this video today, show you how to research the market. I think a lot of people just don't know really how to start and they're afraid to contact a realtor. They're afraid to contact a lender because they don't want to get marched or pushed down the timeline of purchasing. 
And so it should be known that like, there's a lot of things you have to do before you buy a house. No one can really force you into anything. Um, people are here to try to help you find what you're looking for. That's what your realtor is trying to do. And in my case, I'm just trying to help you find the best deal on your home loan. So don't be afraid. Yeah, we're salespeople. Yes, we work on commission. Of course, we're going to follow up as part of it. But you can also, um, you know, heed that pretty easily by just sort of letting people know what your intentions are. Like, hey, here's what I'm going to do for the next month. I'm going to just, you know, do this. I'm just going to research. Okay, cool. You let people let your people know that. Great. They're just going to try to reach out and try to help you. So you don't have to be, you know, so defensive about it. It's just that's what they're there for. So um, it is what it is. Okay. Um, yeah. I think we're going to call it. We're going to call it a day. I wanted to get that in. If you need help with a home loan, especially if you're VA, you need help with a VA loan. Oh, man, another one today. I mean, it happens so much. It's just freaking crazy to me. This gentleman was pre approved for 300000 with a different lender. They're like, you can't get anything for 300000 his agent was like, listen, talk to my guy, send them to me. We got him pre-approved for 750000 This is not a joke. Not a joke. I have no idea what the other lender was doing, but there are a lot of lenders who just don't know what they're doing, especially when it comes to VA loans. VA loans are different. There's a lot of nuances. The way you qualify people is different. You have to have the numbers in correctly when you run DU. You got to make sure you have your residual stuff set up in there. There's a lot of different things people just don't know about and understand about VA loans. And, you know, it's a shame because the veteran deserves someone who knows how to do the loan that they're entitled to. And a lot of times that's not what they get. And when they do get someone who understands the VA loan, a big company or something somewhere in a call center, they're charging insane amounts of money. They're charging tons of money. And it's just, it's just totally gross. I just can't stand it. Drives me nuts. If you notice that they're, that your lender's charging any fees on a VA loan or an FHA loan for that matter. Check, please. Just get out of there. Check, please. Get out. Give me a call. All right, guys. Have a terrific day, and I will see you all again soon. Take care.